All right, so we're back and we have our Max Air fan. Finally, we can assure that we will not suffocate in our house. All right, so now that we're warm, to install this fan, what we need to do is cut the hole in the roof, make a frame for the fan, which is actually very important, then uh, stick it, screw it, and seal it. So the most common thing that people do is build their frame for their fan out of some sort of wood. But it is extraordinarily important that you actually build a frame for your fan for two main reasons. The first reason is that when you're installing the fan, you have screws that go around the outside in order to attach the fan to the roof of the vehicle. And in order for those screws to actually stay in place, they need to lock onto something on the inside of the van. Hence why you build the wooden frame for the screws to go into. The second reason why you need to do it is because if you read in the instructions, it says Max Fan is designed for a minimum roof thickness of 25 millimeters. Now the roof of the van is one millimeter, maximum two millimeters. I don't know whether any of you who have already installed this fan got it all confused, but we got confused between the instructions and what other people have actually done in their installations. In the instructions, it says that uh, if you have a standard model, you have to cut a 355 millimeter opening. But if you have the KI models, you have to cut a 400 millimeter opening. About 90% of the people who actually install the KI model actually cut the 355 millimeter square hole instead of the 400 one. So it was like, what? Okay, we, so which one's right? Why does it work? So we made a few calls and we're gonna tell you what we found out. All right, so what is confusing about this model is that it has this extra channel here because a lot of other fans like the, the Fantastic, the, I guess the smaller one of this model doesn't have this rim. A lot of people cut the hole and the frame around this box. If you put the frame right next to the inner box, which is the 355 square box, the standard sort of cube wood that people use, which is like five by five centimeters, does not cover the holes. The screws will go only halfway in, so that's pretty much useless. So that means that the actual frame has to make a hole of 40 by 40 centimeters, because that fits pretty much perfectly in the center of the cube. If you build your frame 400 by 400 and you cut your hole 400 by 400, so this is the skin of the van, then you put the frame on the ceiling like this. And what you end up with is a wall uh, built like this, like that, like this, and a gap here. And I was like, well, what do we do with this gap? That's literally the only reason we were pondering it. We think we're gonna go as instructed and going to cut both the frame and the hole 400 by 400 because then these these ribs get to do their job the way they're supposed to do and what's the purpose of this i don't know okay so that was why we were confused now we need a hole of 400 by 400 millimeters to do that we can't cut the wood 400 by 400 because the the wood has a thickness we have a plank of 47 by 47 mil, which means because we're gonna be using a lap joint, which I'm gonna draw in a minute, each of these planks needs to be 494 millimeters long. All right, so I'm sure that you're already seeing the gist of this, but essentially the other plank would come in something like this. All right, so first things first, we need four planks of 49.4. To do the initial cuts, we're gonna use our miter saw and that cuts a little bit thick maybe of two mil so we need to make sure that we allow for that in our measurements all right so 49.4 is right here all right and i'm just gonna give two mil space like that so we pretty much cut kind of in the this midpoint here On both sides, the uh, 47 millimeter line, give or take. 
Now we need to uh, mark the, the ledge that we need to cut. So what you need to do is find the midpoint of your plank of wood. In our case, we need to divide 47 by two. Then do that on the other side. What we're gonna do is just extend the edge of our side line there. Extend the other one. And then join them. Then it is best to double check the measurement. Give or take. All right, so once you've done that, pick one of the halves and then just color it in. And that will be the part that you will cut when you get to cutting. So this is the one I made earlier. And as you see, one side is hashed on this one and the opposing side is hashed on the other one. So they need to crisscross. And you do that on all of them. Because our saw does not have a stop, we have to manually stop the saw before it cuts uh, lower than it should. So we mark two centimeters up the saw. So as we spin, we see that red line and we do not go too far above it. And obviously all those lines on the piece of wood are also our guide. Right, so we've cut down on that side there and we flipped around and cut on the other side there, down to the line. Now all we need to do is cut along this line down the depth to hit there and this chunk will come out. Now that we have uh, started cutting them, I need to sand down the imperfections. What we're going to use is the, the sort of vibrating sanders because the circular ones will probably be too powerful and take off too much. And a hand file for those kind of more robust areas that we can't reach with this. So let's just stick them. Uh, so what we have in here is some uh, Sikaflex Pro 3. Um, uh, it's just what we had around the house. It will work just as well. It's uh, what we use to stick some of the battens on the floor. It will work. It's strong. I think it's actually used on concrete bridges. So. Not as stuck as we thought. <laughs> Just stick it back on, it'll be fine. 